Another former Trump administration aide has been subpoenaed by the House Select Committee investigating the January 6th attack on the Capitol. Former Deputy Chief of Staff Dan Scavino is the fourth person the committee has called on to testify in recent weeks. Mr. Trump's attorneys have told his former aides to invoke any immunity and privilege to fight the subpoenas. Mr. Trump is also fighting the committee's request to obtain White House documents from January 6th. For more on all of this, I want to bring in CBS News legal contributor and former New York prosecutor Rebecca Royfe. Rebecca, welcome. Great to see you. So President Biden rejected former President Trump's assertion of executive privilege to withhold some of these White House documents from the subcommittee. Mr. Trump's attorneys are arguing that documents and communications related to a sitting president should be shielded from the public. But President Biden says an assertion of executive privilege is not justified in this case. So does the former president's stance have a legal standing here? So these are complicated legal questions that really haven't yet been resolved by courts. There are a couple of things. I mean, as you highlighted, there are three questions here. One, are these documents, are the things being requested subject to the executive privilege? If they are subject to the executive privilege, who gets to assert that privilege former President Trump or the current president. And finally, even if um, we assume that there's no um, possibility of an executive privilege assertion, how does Congress enforce these subpoenas? And so on the question of whether the former president can or cannot assert the privilege, there's some clues in precedent. And those clues suggest that a former president may have some interest. So a former president can assert the privilege, but the ultimate decision maker, and again, these are not conclusions conclusions, but rather just things that the Supreme Court has said um, in resolving other cases, the final decision gets made by an incumbent. This makes sense because essentially the executive privilege is a determination of what's in the public interest. Now, obviously, the person who's serving as the president currently is in the best position as an elected official to determine what's in the public interest. But again, as I said, these are uncharted waters. Uncharted and complicated, for sure. So, Rebecca, if these documents <laughs> are brought before the subcommittee, <laughs> what new information can we expect to learn about the insurrection specifically? Well, I mean, you know, without knowing what's in those documents, it's hard to sell, say, but what the committee is doing is they're following the facts. So there are a couple of questions that I think that should be at the top of the committee's concern. One is, what did the president know about the election? Did he know that, in fact, the election had not been stolen? At what point was he told this? Um, what did he then do? Because we've already heard recently about his efforts to replace the uh, acting at assistant general with, uh, assist sorry, the acting attorney general with a loyalist. So did he do that in other situations? Was he trying to pack these agencies with loyalists who would do what he wanted? Second of all, we want to know what happened on January 6th and leading up to January 6th. What did the president know? Who was he communicating with? Who are the people around him communicating with? And then, of course, what happened at that moment and right afterwards? So those, this is the portrait that the commission is trying to draw. And in order to do that, they need access to this massive amount of information information in order to untangle these facts. And Rebecca, so far the committee has subpoenaed four Trump administration officials, Steve Bannon, Mark Meadows, Cash Patel, and Dan Scavino. One of them, Steve Bannon, wasn't even working for the administration. So does he, even, even if we go, you know, revisit all these questions over protections that, you know, executive privilege may or may not be here, would he have any legal protections? And then do any of them have legal standing? Right. So it, it isn't really anything that belongs to any of these witnesses. Um, as we were talking about before, it could be the current president's privilege to assert or the former president's privilege to assert. But you are absolutely right in pointing out that Steve Bannon is not was not, at the time of these communications, a White House employee or in any other way employed by the executive branch. Um, that, I think, makes any assertion of executive pr privilege by the president or the former president or anyone virtually frivolous. So, you know, I really don't think that there is any substantive worth to that legal argument. But as I said before, that's not the only question. The, the, there's one other lingering question, which is how does Congress enforce its subpoena and can it do so before these witnesses or 
those witnesses on behalf of the former president run out the clock. Because, of course, if you know, the elections happen in 2022 and the makeup of the Congress changes, then this whole commission could be disbanded and the question could be moot. So the question really is, can Congress enforce these and can it enforce them in time? And so it's suggested now the commission, perhaps, that they would refer any resistance on the part of Bannon to the Department of Justice for enforcement, and maybe that could happen. Rebecca Wojewie, thank you so much for your legal insight. We appreciate it.